and all the way Bells on pop tail ring Making spirits bright Fun it is to ride a sing a slaying song tonight Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out jingle bells. We're going to look at a real simple version, then we'll look at this kind of... Uh, country style picking out the bass note thingy which kind of i think makes it sound kind of fun and even more christmasy if it could be more christmasy than jingle bells so we're going to start real simple just four down strums to the bar and i'll take you through where you can add in some extra chord changes and how you can jazz it up a little later on but as usual it's better to start simple hey so first progression all, it's all open chords, F chord. You need, you're going to need an F chord, right? So for beginners, you've got uh, your choices of your F major 7, F, bar chord F, or F with the thumb open. Depending on your ability level, you could choose which one of those things that you want. Uh, G7 is, is in my songbook there, and that definitely works. I'm going to simplify it to G just for the beginning, but usually where there's a G, you can play a G7 if you like. But just for this, keeping it real super simple at the beginning thing, we're going to just knock it down to just regular G. So we're going to be starting on a C chord. So three, four, C, in through the second bar of C, then a third bar of C going to F, another bar of F going to G. Another bar of G going to C. Second half of the verse. C, du, da, da. Another bar of C. And another bar of C going to F. Second bar of F. Then back to C. Then G chord going to C. Okay, let me just talk that out. If you've got a pen and paper, you want to write it down. Even better if you get the... Uh, Justin Guitar songbook, Christmas songbook. Uh, it's got it all written out for you. Anyway, enough of the plug-in. Oh, now I've dropped my pick. God, professionals, hey? Um, the uh, chord progression for verse one is C, 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 F, F, G, G, C. I recommend you write it down that way. So you go C, 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 F, F, G, G, C. Second half of the verse, C, 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 F, F, C, G, C. So just a little bit different there at the end. Okay, I'll say it one more time. C, 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 F, F, G, G, C. C, 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 F, F, C, G, C. Okay, into the chorus. C, 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 C for a second bar. C for a third bar. And then C for a fourth bar. Then F for a bar. Then C for a bar, then D chord or D7 going to G or G7. C, C again. C for a third bar and then a C for a fourth bar too. F chord for a bar, then C chord for a bar, then G or G7 going to C. Hey, jingle. Okay. That chord progression, I'll speak it out to you again. I recommend you write it down if you haven't got the book in front of you. It is C, 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 then F, C, D, G, or D7, G7 if you know your dominant seventh chords. Second part, C, 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 F, C, G7, or G if you don't know your seventh chords, to a C chord. Okay. Now, there's a couple of places in here where you can add in an extra chord, and I think it sounds really nice. The most obvious one for me is actually in the chorus, where well, we've got four bars of C in a row. I think it sounds really nice to add an F chord uh, for the second half of the third bar. So C chord, C, C, F, C, F. Okay, so jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. It, it, that's kind of ha how the harmony works for me in that song. You know, you, you, you don't have to play it, okay? So if you're a real beginner, you can just leave that out. But it, it certainly adds to it, I think, and it complements the melody a little uh, a little better. So that would be the first one that I'd add in. The second one would be at the end of verse one. 
where it stays on the C chord for a bar. I think it sounds nice for the, you know, slaying song tonight, oh, jingle, on that, oh, you'd play a G chord. So, uh, F1, F1, C chord to a G7 going to C, G, jingle bell, jing. Okay, just on that, that the last two beats of the last bar of the verse, you can put a G chord. Again, you don't have to. If you want to keep it simple, you can just leave it out. So I've left it out in the songbook. If you've got the songbook in front of you, you just want to write a little G chord in there if you like. As usual with arrangements of traditional songs, you're really free to play it any way you like, okay? So you could use almost any strumming pattern that feels good for you. And if you're going to do your own, which I would recommend you kind of do, it's pretty free. You could play it as a finger style thing. You can play it as a rock thing. You could play any which way, really. Um, but one that I think works really well for this is to play a bass note on beat one and then a strum on beat two, bass note on beat three, strum on beat four. So on a C chord, just going bass, strum, bass, strum, bass, strum. If I keep doing it really slow, dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. Laughing all the way, bells on Bob Dylan. Now what you need to know if you're going to do that is which is the bass note of your chord. And I'm kind of hoping many of you will know that already. For the C chord would be the fifth string. For the F will be the thicker string. G will be the thicker string. C will be the thicker string again. And I think that's all you need. Oh, the D chord. D chord when you get to that will be the, the open fourth string. So. Um, if I just do, I'll play through the whole tune like that, just keeping fairly strictly to playing the bass note of the chord and then a strum on beats two and four. And I'll just play it through so you can hear kind of how that sounds. One, two, three, four. So that would be, it should be first step if you're going to get into doing this kind of uh, picking out the bass note thing. But where it starts to get a little bit more fun is if you start alternating the bass notes, okay? So this is getting into kind of intermediate guitar territory, really. So most beginners will probably find this a little difficult. But um, so long as you play the bass note of the chord on beat one, the chord that you put, or the bass note that you play on beat three, can sometimes be called to have it as either the fifth of the, of the chord or the third of the chord. So with a C chord, you move your third finger over to play the uh, third fret of the thicker string. I'm sure you've heard that in kind of a country cliche almost, to, to play this C strum, G strum, C strum, G strum, C. So if you want to just, I'll explain that one as well. I think I did it in the intro. So literally, I'm just uh, playing alternating between the C and the G. And then I go C, G, which is in the same fret. So C, the bass note, third fret, fifth string. G, which is third fret of the thicker string. Open A string, fifth string. Second fret, same string. And then walking back up to the C. Okay, so C. That leads to another nice little chord movement that you can do actually is uh, on the C chord uh, in the verse before the F. So we got that three bars of C in a row. You can use the open E. So it's a C slash E chord would be its proper name. But uh, if you just think like a regular C chord, but you're going to play the open E leading to the F. Sounds real nice, I think. So C, 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 E bass, F. For the F chord, you're going to play thicker string, fifth string. Now for the G chord, you're going to play the, it's a little harder because you're going to play the thicker string on the beat and the fourth string on the three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. OK, 
Okay, so just if I play through the verse now using this idea of playing the fifth of the chord uh, as the second bass note, so if that's making sense. So root, strum, fifth of the chord, strum. Okay, C, G, C, I'm calling the bass notes here. C, E, F, C, F, C, G, D, G, D, C, G, C, G, C, G, C, E, F, C, F, C, C, G, G, D, C. Okay, this is alternating the bass, okay? Some of you might find it a little difficult if you're not sure about the notes, because I'm calling out the notes there. If you need a refresher as part of my beginner's course, you're going to see in the later stages there's a lesson on notes in the open position, which teaches you all of the note names, E, F, G, A, B, C, all of that stuff. The actual proper note names all in, all in that first position. So you, it's the kind of information that you find really helpful if you're getting into this more advanced material. That's the kind of stuff that you should, you should know about, really. Um, let me take you through that same idea for the chorus now. So that'll be C chord, G, C, G, C, F chord. You just got that F there for the two beats. So C, G bass note, C, G bass note, C, F full chord, C, G, F, C, C, G, D, A, G. Okay, so there's another little movement here. So I'm playing the D. A bass note, then G. B bass note works really well there because it's going nicely back to the C. Okay, so D, A, G, B, C, G, C, G, C, then F chord if you want to put the fancy thing in C, G, F, C, C, G. Again, I did a little walk up. Nice little walk up to get from the G chord to the C. G chord, strum, A, B, C. Now, you can get a lot fancier than that. There's lots of different ways of incorporating this idea of, of moving the bass note around a little bit. Um, other little twiddles you can do, like on the C chord. So I like doing C, strum, where I play the o I lift up my second finger on the C chord, play the open D, and then hammer the second finger down. And you can kind of not really, well, you can mix it up however you like. So it's nice to have a pattern. So at the beginning, you're doing C, C, G, C, hammer, C. If you wanted to do that kind of thing, it's nice to have some sort of uh, symmetry to your patterns, but you don't have to have. And again, I really encourage you to make up your own arrangements of these things, because that's really where the fun is, is. It's not just playing the tune. You know, this kind of thing definitely works great as a kind of a rock song as well. So if you wanted to do the whole thing as power chords, you know, um, dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh, over fields we go, laughing all the way. You could do it that way. You could do it a folky. Um, Dashing through the snow, on horse open sleigh, over fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on bobtails ring. I mean, you, you really could do it lots and lots of different ways, and I think it's. Uh, it's kind of part of the fun of it, really, is learning these tunes where the chords are fairly simple, the melodies are fairly simple, lots of people can sing it along, so you can really have a little bit of a laugh uh, with it. And isn't that the point of this kind of season and you know, playing with friends and family? And it's having a laugh, so I would encourage you to do that as much as you can. Laughter is a fantastic thing. Anyways, look, I hope this brings you lots of Christmas cheer. Remember, there's loads more Christmas songs, pop songs, carols, all of that over on the website, so do go and check it out. Thousands of lessons all for free, as you probably know already. Wishing you an absolutely amazing Christmas festive season, holiday season, whatever it is that you celebrate over this period. And I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.